of high school football. Tonight's game comes to you from Charles McNulty Stadium on the campus of Finneytown High School, bringing you a Cincinnati Hills League game between the Cowboys of Wyoming and the Wildcats of Finneytown. I'm Dave Bean, and hopefully I'll be joined a little bit later by Andy Anderson at some point in the game this evening. Both teams enter tonight's game a with 2-0 records. Wyoming coming off wins over Kings and Roger Bacon, while Finneytown has defeated North College Hill and Lachlan. Wyoming last year went to the state semifinals uh, before it uh, gave up the, the season and ended up with an 11-2 season. They returned five defensive and seven offensive positions for Coach Barry, who's in his ninth season at his alma mater, Wyoming. Finneytown returns nine offensive and eight defensive positions for first-year coach Bruce Dixon, and has suffered and is uh, and last year suffered through an 0 and 11 or 0 and 10 season in '98. The uh, the Cowboys won the toss this evening and deferred, and the Wildcats chose to receive the ball from the south end of the field, and uh, we'll be going. Uh, We'll be going to that here pretty quickly. We, uh, we're getting ready for the kickoff. Uh, Wyoming's, uh, uh, Wyoming's kicker is uh, getting ready to address the ball. It's uh, uh, 51. That's uh, Neil Smiley. Uh, at least that's who's indicated. And he's an offensive lineman. He's a sophomore. And uh, we'll be getting ready for uh, the uh, the kickoff here shortly. You have to give us a little bit of a chance here this evening. We uh, have are having some technical difficulties with our monitor, so we're going to call it as we see it. Kickoff goes deep, drives and drives uh, Tony Wright uh, running. Or excuse me, that uh, that ball goes into the end zone. And uh, Mike Harris watched it go into the end zone and will be putting the ball in play. For the Wildcats, uh, starting this evening will be Jason Hurd, number one, uh, five nine senior uh, running back. Eric Elmendorf will be at fullback. He's a 200 pounder. At, uh, 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 excuse me, uh, Elmendorf's a tight end. Ogletree's at fullback, a uh, senior, 215 pounds. Jason Gardner will be the quarterback. And Eric Ogletree gets the carry, the first uh, thing out of the bag here. We'll pick up these other players as we as we get started. That was uh, Zach Novak, uh, Wyoming's uh, outstanding linebacker, in on the tackle for the Cowboys on the first series. A gain of about a yard brings up second and nine. Again, a very short gain in there. The Wyoming line uh, standing up really tough and, and uh, pushing the Wildcats back to uh, a loss on the play. A loss of about one brings up a third and ten situation for the Wildcats. Gardner drops, rolls to pass, and he's dropped for a loss by... Number 59. That's uh, Zach Bukovalas uh, with the sack of uh, Jason Gardner on the play. Takes the ball back another 10 yards, fourth and 20, and punting for Finneytown. Number 12, J Jason Gardner's back to punt. Gardner's punt is fairly short, takes a Wyoming bounce, and it's down at the Finneytown 30-yard line. That is not an auspicious opening for the Wildcats. That is not the way I'm sure that the coaching staff had the thing drawn up. Uh, starting at quarterback this evening for the Cowboys, I mean, number three, Kyle Lewis. Uh, the fullback will be Scott Kreider, 205-pound senior. Stuart Patch will be at wide receiver for them. Another wide receiver is Adam Monday and running back David Dupree. First and 10 Cowboys at the Finneytown 30-yard line. 
And in motion. David Dupree attempts a sweep to the right without uh, any success. Number 20 on the tackle for the Wildcats was Mike Harris. Gain of one, second and one for the Cowboys. Ball on the, still, you know, it's just beyond the 30 yard line, it's about the 29. Here comes David Dupree, comes out. Uh, uh, that's uh, Jason Gardner finally brings him down. Santino Lambert had a shot at him and, and uh, missed, but uh, that picks up a first down for the uh, Cowboys at the Finneytown 24, 23. Let's try the 18 yard line. First and 10, Cowboys. Lewis under center, pitches back to David Dupree. Dupree turns the corner and picks up maybe five on the play. We have uh, Travis Vesser, defensive lineman uh, over there, finishes, gets the ta in on the tackle. Jason Hurd uh, is in on the, the play for Finneytown also. Hurd came up kind of winching his arm a little bit there. His left arm looks like it may be hurt. That's Finneytown's premier running back. I'm uh, sure that the coaching staff is pretty well aware of that one and pretty concerned about it at the same time, but it'll be second and three now. Dupree again on the carry up the middle. Stacked up there. Uh, Eric Elmendorf in there on the on the tackle. And uh, number 80, Tony Lehman uh, in, in uh, it can't be, but that's what it says. Third and four. Dupree again on the carry. Carries it up the middle. Uh, Santino Lambert and uh, Eric Elmendorf on the tackle for the Wildcats. Comes close to the first down. Uh, based on the spot of the chains, looks like they've come up short. It'll be fourth and one. The ball's on the nine yard line of the Wildcats. Looks like uh, the Cowboys are going to go ahead and go for this. They've had good success running the ball at this point. They believe they can wedge this out of there and pick up the one yard. See if the Wildcat defense is up to the challenge. Well, there's a quarterback sneak by uh, by uh, Kyle Lewis. Picks up the first down. It's a first down and give him a first and goal. Ball will be resting at about the eight yard line. Play comes in from the bench for the Cowboys. Finneytown's got his back against his goal line at this point and things are not looking real good for the, for the uh, Wildcats. Here goes Dupree around left end. And he's in for the wild before the Wyoming touchdown. Well, that drive was all David Dupre for the Cowboys. He took the ball from they started at their at the Finneytown 30 yard line and drove it down the field in uh, uh, about uh, six, eight, about nine plays and uh, put it into the end zone. We have flags down all over the field before the extra point can be attempted. Play. 
Neil Smiley is the place kicker for the Cowboys. Uh, and uh, yeah, they're going to move that ball back. Apparently, the, the Cowboys were uh, it made, there was movement in the line, moves the ball back five. They'll take it again from the eight yard line. Neil Smiley. This isn't an automatic event. Uh, as you find a lot of instances, that ball's up and it's good. So the Cowboys go on top with 6.15 in the first quarter. Uh, the Wyoming's up seven zip over the Wildcats of Finneytown. Well, that uh, again, that was not what head coach Bruce Dixon wanted to see happen in the first series out here. Finneytown needed to get that ball and move it and get a possession and do something with it in that first possession. They failed to do so. So now they're going to have to start from a deficit here and try and uh, try and see what they can what they can do with the ball at this point in time. Mike Harris is deep for the Wildcats. Uh, Eric Ogletree and uh, Andrew Ritchie, Drew Reichley, uh, up short man for the Wildcats. Kicking for the Cowboys is again uh, number 51, Neil Smiley. And the there's been a lot of enthusiasm around Finneytown this week. These two victories here at the start of this season have been very important. That's Mike Harris with the ball, brings the ball out to about the, well, brings it right up to the 20-yard line. Got the ball at the, about at the goal line. That was kind of dangerous back there. He almost slipped and fell. The field is in terrible condition here at Finneytown. Uh, it's dry, it's hard, the grass is, is, uh, is sparse. Um, it's clumpy. There, are, there is uh, very little grass in the middle of the field. The stuff that looks kind of green is uh, chickweed. Uh, I guess we have to attribute it to the harsh weather this summer, although apparently the irrigation system didn't work, and uh, uh, the, uh, the field here is in very, very bad condition. Makes it very difficult to play, and uh, the players out there are, are it's, it's not playing well in addition to that. You'll see some funny bounces, and hopefully you won't see any funny falls because uh, the, this field is rough enough that it can cause uh, falls and uh, uh, sprains and uh, other injuries. So it's, uh, it's really marginal at this point. Be second and nine. Ball's on the 21-yard 21, 21 line of the Wildcats. It's Jason Hurd, the ball carrier, off, right, off the right side uh, without, uh, without, much, without much success. It's a big matchup on that side of the field over there. Number 77, Eric Deutsch, is a 310-pound senior, and uh, he's playing opposite uh, Finneytown's 77. Uh, no, that's not right. He's not number 77. 71, Travis Vesser, who's a 285-pound offensive lineman. Here comes Jason Hurt. Uh, uh, Jason Gardner sweeping uh, his own, own uh, on a quarterback sweep, uh, run out of bounds, but picks up about about eight yards. It looks like he'll be short of the first down. Although we're going, we've got this on replay here. You can see Gardner rolls out, nothing there in front of him, and so he's going to take off and cover some territory. And there comes number 31 for the Cowboys. That's uh, David Dupe, uh, Dupe uh, on the on the tackle for the Cowboys. These are small schools, folks. These are Division Four schools, and they uh, they do uh, they they have a lot of kids going both ways. It isn't what like watching a Moeller or a Princeton where you've got hundreds of kids on the sideline. Chains have to come all the way across the field. It's enough for a first down. The Wildcats. The Wildcats pick up a first down on a great individual effort there by Jason Gardner. 
Jason's a senior and uh, very fine basketball player for Chuck Grocer's Wildcats. First and ten, Wildcats. The ball's on the 30. Scott Kreider on the tackle with that tackle for a loss of uh, uh, Mike Harris. Uh, that one doesn't do too much. Uh, it, uh, it looks like the uh, Finneytown offense is having a hard time dealing with the defensive line. And it looks like what the Wildcats are doing is moving people. Jason Gardner's dropped in his backfield by number 55, Bobby Combs. Uh, yeah, Mike Nagel. With the tackle there for the Cowboys. Another loss. The ball's back uh, on the uh, 20 at the 22 yard line. Third and 18. Here comes here comes Jason. Jason Hurd makes something happen for himself. Brings the ball back to about the first, the original line of scrimmage where the Wildcats are going to be put in a situation of having to punt again. Jason Gardner is back in punt formation deep for the Cowboys. Number seven, Ryan Shelton. And number 14, Eric Danzel. Dantzler. Eric Dantzler uh, are back for the Cowboys. So far, the offense of Finneytown has gone absolutely nowhere. That's Eric Dantzler with the ball. He got a couple good blocks. He's, uh, he's making a big run at it. Eric Dantzler, Dantzler, 27, Lane, Lane Meter finally gets the, puts the tackle on Lane Meter, a freshman, uh, who's forced to stop. And Wyoming's gonna take the ball over. Oh, there's a, there's a flag down, back up field. See a great run here. Maybe it's because of a block in the, block in the back that uh, they're bringing the ball back. So this great run by Dantzler is uh, wiped out. They bring the ball back. Flipping indicated against the against the Cowboys that that does make those runbacks a lot better when you get a, a couple uh, clips in there. Cowboys spread the field. They're starting now from their own 30-yard line instead of the Finneytown's. And the pass complete to pass complete to number nine uh, Adam Monday. The ball was knocked loose, but apparently marked. Uh, Monday was already down, and they don't count the uh, fumble. I don't know if we've got that on replay or not, but uh, that was a pretty good, pretty good hit. Finneytown thought they had a, had the ball back at that point, but to no avail. Uh, Wildcats uh, give up uh, about nine yards on the play, second and one, and there's movement all, all around the field. Looks like uh, Wyoming jumped the gun on that one and, and uh, the Wildcats benefit from a penalty against the Cowboys. That's, uh, that's always good. Mistakes are the things that slow football teams down and Finneytown's had its share of mistakes already with, with the blocks that uh, didn't take place, with uh, missed blocks, missed tackles. And now Wyoming's returning the favor with some mistakes being made also. It's Eric Elmendorf, number nine. Uh, on the, uh, the blitz, 
splits in there and drops. You're going to get a good replay here. You're going to see Elman or Ogletree's there just about as fast as, as the ball is. If he'd gotten there any earlier, he'd have taken the handoff, and uh, uh, th that ball wouldn't have uh, been that ball couldn't have been handed off. Oh, there's a mix up in the backfield, and there the ball is loose. Finneytown has the ball on that one. Who comes up off the bottom? Number 90. Number 90. Mike Hall comes up with a wild, uh, the Wyoming fumble. We've got a really good view of this on replay. Here you can see, oh, number one, uh, Scott Kreider and Kyle Lewis just collide back there. And there's Eric Oldtree again who pulls the ball free and Mike Hall right behind him. Great shot by great camera work from the uh, Waycross Volunteers. Great job, Finneytown takes the ball at the Wyoming 20 yard line. Let's see if the Wildcats can punch one in. They gave Wyoming one, let's see if they can push one in now. Give the ball to Eric Ogletree and he drives forward, picking up about three yards it looks like. It'll be second and seven. See how intense the Wildcat football team can be at this point because they're having to move a lot of people out of the way. Eric Do uh, Deutsch, 300-pound, uh, 10-pound senior, was driven out of the play that time uh, by Bobby Combs. Great block in there. No, he's. I'm sorry. That's Travis Besser. He's come over. He's playing over. There's a timeout on the field. As uh, I don't, I didn't see who made the, who called the timeout, but uh, I think that may have been made may have been called by Wyoming, and they're a little bit concerned about what's going on. Okay, so so we have uh, when we come back to action, it'll be second and seven for the Wildcats. The boy, the ball will be on the 17-yard line of Wyoming. Oh, Jason Gardner didn't, there's there's the call. Gardner makes the call. Calls timeout, he looked up there and saw something that he didn't like and uh, made the wise choice of saying, well, let's talk about this and made the call. There's some of the varsity cheerleaders on the head side. New head coach, Coach Dixon. Looks down and again, oh, number four, Drew Reichley uh, pounds in there for no gain. Stood up and stood up in the hole by uh, 55, Mike Nagel. And certainly the Finneytown team is not outsized. They have a good size offensive and defensive line. As a matter of fact, maybe bigger than, than Wyoming across the, the, the line as a whole. What do we do? We ran out of time. We're at the end of the first quarter. And as the team's trade ends of the field, it's going to be Wyoming 7, Finneytown nothing. But the Wildcats are knocking on the door. But you know, it's a, a tradition plays a tremendous role in things. Finneytown's gone through its uh, down cycle here for the last few years and uh, went over last year uh, while the Cowboys made their big push and went all the way to the state semifinals. <coughs> and that's not, obviously, that's not the first time the Cowboys have been in that position again and again and again. They've uh, been uh, a playoff contender in the state and uh, the Wildcats have kind of been in the background for a number of years. But I think that, uh, you know, you're seeing a rejuvenation of an attitude here on the part of these guys. A lot of seniors on the field for the Wildcats and juniors and sophomores who've been through those 0 for seasons, and they don't like the taste. And so they're, they're going to give everything they've got. On the other hand, Wyoming just reloads year after year after year. Uh, it isn't that they have to rebuild. They just reload. They returned uh, 12 positions on off between offense and defense, but the kids that are filling in for the graduates from last year are all, uh, they all have confidence in what they're able to do. And uh, 
that's the, the, the nature of the game when you have a nine-year continuing record uh, such as uh, Coach Bernie Berry does with the Cowboys. Well, here we return to action, third and seven. Ball's handed off. Hey, great, a great individual run by Jason Hurd. Breaks up the middle, breaks up the middle with a great trap block and carries 17 yards for the, uh, the, the Finneytown touchdown. Great individual effort. And I think we'll see a great trap block in here. That's an isolation block, but great blocking by the interior for the Finneytown line. They got the they got the Cowboys moving one way and took them the other. Way to go, Wildcats! So Ryan Shelton got the last shot in at uh, the at the uh, at the goal line, but wasn't enough. 38 is. So, <laughs> I, don't, I can't tell you who the kicker is for the Wildcats. He's not on the roster. Um, closest we've got to Darnell Smith, but I don't believe that's Darnell. That's Chris Holworth is the place kicker for the Wildcats. And... Uh, They've got him down here with a different number, so uh, I'll be able to keep up with that again. Horworth, Horworth will be uh, kicking off for the uh, Wildcats with 11.54 in the uh, second quarter. The Wildcats tie the game up 7-7. Horworth's kickoff drives. Drives number 14. Uh, that's uh, Eric Dan uh, Dantzler driven all the way into the end of the end zone. The ball bounces through the end zone. The Cowboys will take over at their own 20-yard line. First and 10, Wyoming. Now that's a better field position. See, there's a, a lot to go with this idea of just, uh, you know, where you start the game. If you start playing on your own 20, it's one thing. If you start playing on the other guy's 20, it's something much different. All right. The Cowboys aren't worried. They've, they've, they've been in these situations before. They're right back and ready to go again. They're coming to the line of scrimmage. And... Yeah. There goes... Oh, boy, I'll tell you what, uh, David uh, Dupe just about broke that one. Uh, that was very close to, to uh, ripping out of there. Uh, and uh, Drew uh, Reichley with the tackle for Finneytown. And finally, getting up here out of the production truck is a trusted sidekick, Andy Anderson, and you won't have to listen to me all night. There's Dave Schutte on the sideline. Cincinnati Enquirer covering tonight's action. Good neighborhood rivalry, kind of thing that Dave wants to see. And uh, that uh, pass intended for number uh, 83, that's Zach Novak, uh, is uh, incomplete, and, and uh, uh, that uh, brings up a third down for the Cowboys. They'll be uh, returning the to the uh, line of scrimmage, which is the Finneytown 27-yard line, 26-yard line. Third down. I see, Dave, the uh, Finneytown defense is definitely going to that 4-4. Yeah, they, uh, they, and they've uh, started blitzing a lot more, but Fumble there, again, fumble again, ball, ball recovered. Fantastic defense. Well, he just kind of ran away from the ball, it looked like. He got stripped. That's number 55, Bobby Combs. That's Bobby comes Combs. Up, comes up with the with the tackle for the ball. I think he knocked the ball loose, too, Andy. On the replay, I think we'll see that. Uh, Cowboys definitely trying to use their power game, power and running game, Dubay. to break to Breaks through, makes and a nice cut inside. There. And Bobby just there's makes a cut back, and there's the strip. 45 knocks the ball loose. 45, that's B.J. Lambert. Fantastic. Knocked the ball loose for the Wildcats. They get the ball back on the Wyoming 40-yard line. First and 10, Finneytown. And we have officials stop this 44-yard line. 
There's, there's a good shot Let's of Bobby. Let's try the 41 yard line. There's Bobby on the sideline. Good size, good size. That's a, that's a defender's uh, dream, Andy, to get get a hold of the football. A lot of times you aren't sure what you're supposed to do with it, but getting a hold of it is the important thing. Well, he made some good hustle dropping back 10 yards from off the line. Uh, there's, there's Gardner on a screen pass. This has Swing potential. the ball out to Jason Hurd. And Hurd picks up the first down for the Wildcats. Takes the ball down to about, well, where are we? 25? About the 25-yard line. Wildcats are taking advantage of things that are being given them by uh, the Wyoming defense, but... <coughs> well, in a game like this, you're going to have to either uh, create your own breaks or take advantage of the ones handed to you. And in this case, the Wildcats are definitely taking advantage of the ones given to them. Well, I think that another thing is that they haven't they haven't gotten rattled with a bad... Oh, oh. Jason Hurd met... Uh, <laughs> That's <laughs> Scott Kreider in the hole on that one. That, that surprise. <laughs> I don't think that's the way somebody no threw that one out. Needed. That was not that was not drawn that way. <laughs> I think Jason had other plans uh, as far as taking it up the middle that time. Uh, I think he changed his mind <laughs> halfway there and uh, decided he was going to go somewhere else. But Mr. Kreider was there to persuade him to go down. Tay Kreider's listed as a 5'10", 205-pound package. Now, that's a that's a solid package. Gardner's back to pass. Oh. Just deflective. I think Kreider got a hand on this I think Kreider one. touched that one, too. Yeah. Hurd, uh, Hurd was the intended receiver. Missed it, and uh, that brings up a third and ten situation for the Wildcats. Compared to last year, Jason Gardner has definitely matured in his... In his uh, vision of the game. You can see how he's not just checking off on his first receiver. I'm noticing a <laughs> lot more of a, a mature approach to the game in his play this year. Yeah, it makes a difference. Uh, he's he's worked hard. I was commenting before, Andy, that uh, going over uh, his previous season and not winning too many the year before that, a lot of these seniors for Finneytown, that was not a well-thrown ball right there. That was intended for Drew Reichley. Uh, that Gardner's down. It looks like he may have got an ankle. Well, if he got an ankle and he stepped on something, I wouldn't be surprised. Uh, uh, looks like uh, he's not doing too well right now. That's not a good sign when your quarterback's down and holding his hand. Or holding, I'm not sure. Not sure exactly what he was. There's Jim Green out on the sideline for the Wildcats. He's been here, it seems like, for most Wildcat fans. Mr. Green has been around for a long time attending to the injuries of various athletes in, in all the different sports. But this gives us a chance to mention uh, some very important people because these people are volunteers. They come in and they do a great job putting these programs together from uh, the uh, Orthopedic Diagnostic and Treatment Center. Uh, the team physician, Dr. Shockley, is here tonight. Rocky Croy, uh, the AT, the athletic trainer certified, who's uh, a graduate of Wheelersburg High School, class of 88. He comes to us from Sports Therapy Incorporated up on Kemper Road. Dr. Chip Roper, who's a Finneytown class of 79, is working the sidelines as well. And uh, head trainer Jim Green is from Wheelersburg, but he's from the class of 64, not the <laughs> class of 88. So, well, I have uh, to give my hats off to Mr. Green, too. He's helped us out uh, with Waycross Community Media and always been here and letting us in the gate and ensuring that we have all of our needs. So definitely our hats off to him. Look at this well, field goal attempt. We're going we're gonna, we're gonna to take a, a shot at a... Uh, <laughs> we're looking at a 47-yard uh, field goal attempt. Balls, balls free. Balls free. Better uh, pick it get up. Get on the ball. Boy, that, that was almost, uh, that was almost a, a disaster out there. Nick Vile finally picked the ball up and, and uh, this is a uh, this is scary <laughs> no the bad snap the ball bounced back eh, we're gonna look around and see where everybody is that's dangerous to do that's Nick somebody's got to somebody's got to throw a block in there I think that was uh, is that Darnell Smith uh, Nick maybe Bile that was, was Chris Hor Horwath Horworth yeah, Chris Horwath was the, was yeah, definitely the kicker. kicker. Right. Well, Wyoming gets the ball back. And first thing out of the bag, they come back again with uh, 
David Dupay on a sweep to the left. Getting that full house backfield of Wyoming, trying to use the power game. Uh, Finnetown's been running a lot of full house stuff in here also. They've been running uh, sometimes a little wing, but uh, they ran a couple full house situations back there. Both teams are, tend to be uh, much more conservative than, uh, than, than one might expect. Finnetown's changed their defense up a little bit on this next play. Both teams have uh, uh, Dupe again. He's dropped at the line of scrimmage. And I couldn't see it. May have been Ogletree on the tackle on that. I Again, they brought six to the line this time, bringing up two of the middle linebackers in for a six-man front and definitely shutting down any type of inside <laughs> running game that time. And talking with uh, the uh, coaching staff before tonight's game, they, that was one of the things they felt was in their favor. They felt that the lines, uh, the Wyoming's line was not as effective as it's been in the past. They did have several graduates from last year's season, but they also have a 310-pound Eric Deutsch out there and uh, uh, Zach Novak, a great ball player on, in his own right. Nice eight-yard. Scott Kreider, the ball run. carrier, picks up a first. Uh, I don't know if they're going to give it, whether he's got it or not. Spot yep, me. picks up the first down. Let's see, right up the middle, Kreider, just, uh, again, a power run straight up the middle. Yep. <coughs> Nothing fancy. I think when you concentrate too much on, on a main ball handler, that sometimes will throw your defensive scheme off, and all of a sudden you come back with, with your second back and uh, get a 7- to 10-yard gain. I haven't seen what's going on on Finnegan's sideline. I haven't seen uh, uh, Jason Gardner over here. He's standing down here right at midfield. Doesn't look like he's hurt at this point. Looks like he's able to return. Maybe it was just a stinger. The way that he... Uh, the way he came off the field, you couldn't tell whether or not it was Yeah, there. I couldn't tell what, where he was injured. At the end of that replay, yep. when we saw his injury, it was there. There we see, yes. uh, there we see uh, Kyle Lewis calls timeout. He looks out and sees something he doesn't like. He looked up, and I'll, I'll tell you what I think he saw. Uh, I believe it was Santino Lambert creeping. Uh -huh. uh, Santino, very quick, yep. play, playing over on this, on this corner side playing cornerback and he started creeping in off of his off of his primary coverage well <laughs> and uh, when Lewis sees that coming and he's got a play call that is Lambert stepping into that's a good idea to call that one off and try something different that had the that had the look of a very short almost a, just a short out pass that uh, Santino may have had a step on well we've got a first and ten situation when we come back to when we resume here you can see the spottiness of the turf here at, at Finneytown Stadium it's Andy I gotta believe this is the worst I've ever <laughs> seen that turf out there that that's just not good that's that's dangerous well besides the uh, drought conditions that we've had and then the massive heat of the summer yeah. and then all of a sudden you're playing girls and guys soccer as well as the football games yeah, I guess the, the irrigation I guess the irrigation system that uh, was picked up uh, a couple years ago didn't get put into operation this year well there's Lewis hands off to Dupe slams into the left side of the line but you've there's got Eric Ogletree again coming up out there. And Ogletree's in, in everything out here. Oh, you've got to like his aggressiveness. Oh, again. boy. He's right, in, he's right in it. Right he? in this. There's a, follows. Uh, I was trying to see the. Couldn't see quite see the blocker that led Dupe that time. But he created a pretty good wedge out there by himself. Well, they've gone back to a power eye. And. It's going to bounce off the right tackle. About a, uh, about a five yard game. Two teams are playing a very similar game, it seems to me. You Number know, you wonder if that's. that's BJ Lambert with the tackle. We caught a couple of the practices this week just uh, just watching, seeing how the team was handling, uh, handling this type of uh, short week. Yeah. And, uh, you know, watching them practice, it's almost as if they intentionally practiced offense the way that Wyoming would practice offense to improve the defense. That uh, could very well be. I uh, don't know if that's a fact, but I guarantee you what I'm seeing right now is pretty much what we saw in practice this week. There's a nice straight, nice, into, the, nice. straight into the hole and big, big stop in there. Uh, number 
290. My call. Great, great tackle by the 210 pound defensive lineman. He's, He's a like senior. Mike's a senior. Great job. Stands him, stands straight Dupay up. straight up, drives him straight back. We've got uh, Bobby Combs on the tackle. Andy, Andy Anderson gets called for everything around. Andy, maybe you can stop back and, and join us again. I know you got to work right now with some technical stuff. But it's fourth down for the Cowboys, and they're going to go for it. They're right at the 49. Tried to draw the Wildcats offside with uh, inflected uh, in, uh, with voice inflection. Didn't work. The Wildcats sat there and, and waited it out. And uh, it looks like they're going to, they had, Wyoming had to call a timeout. And uh, that's, uh, that's good discipline on the part of the Wildcats. Just sat there and waited. You can see, look at the look at the hard count right there. Said, well, I couldn't get you, so all right, we'll call timeout. We'll call timeout. We're gonna have to punt the ball. And the uh, the Cowboys uh, will resume play with the ball, fourth down, and a yard. May be unusual for you to see the uh, both head coaches go to the huddles here. Frequently, you find assistant coaches going to the huddle. There goes Coach Barry back to the sideline. Coach Dixon just came back to this sideline. Interestingly, neither one of the head coaches wear headsets. Uh, uh oh, oh my goodness gracious, that's trouble. Number 32, boy, that was not what Finney Town was looking for. P.J. Pope. Covers 49 yards and a Wyoming touchdown. Oh my goodness, that was not what uh, w was expected. With uh, five, that that score comes with 5:51 remaining in the first half. Now that's uh, on a fourth down, fourth and two, and all of a yep. sudden, uh, break Pope a play like that. right up the middle. Wow, boy, somebody went. There must have been a blitz going there. You have a blitz and. And uh, you're, you're asking for trouble. Neil Smiley puts Ooh. the ball up. Kick is no, no, no good. good. And uh, that could that could come back to be a uh, a very important uh, a very important extra point the way this game's going. You know, and that has been a long time since I've been able to say that in a Wyoming Finney Town game, <laughs> where uh, maybe a point makes a difference. Well, maybe it will. Who knows? You never know. With five and a half minutes left in this first half, you just have to give your hats off to the Finneytown defense. Even though they're behind by six right now, they have absolutely played some pretty decent football to keep in this game. Now, if the offense can step up over the next uh, series of plays, if Jason Gardner is healthy, uh, Finneytown is going to be in this. They're moving the ball against the Wyoming defense. Yes, they have. They have moved the ball. They need to get back. They need to get the ball back, get it in decent field position, and... Uh, uh, attack the uh, Cowboy defense uh, as uh, effectively as possible. Again, they've done that. Again, coming out with that full house backfield it leaves you a lot of options if you are a running game. And over the past two weeks, the, the Wildcats have amassed some massive yardage by using the running game. Yeah. <coughs> and the kickoff carries down. Oh, that's a dangerous ball. That ball almost went dead right there. He's Mike Harris corner. coming out, coming up field. Can get the corner. Steps out of one. Oop, got collared right there at the 15. I wouldn't say just collared. That was a hog tying collar. Well, <coughs> well I guess uh, no, he didn't get under that, that arm quite quickly enough. <laughs> Mike Harris is uh, probably going back saying, uh, maybe we get a blocker over here next time and it'd help. Watch him make his turn here. Right here come oh that's the one he stepped out of. That's number 89 uh, for the Cowboys. That's number uh, that's uh, Sasha Prydendorf. That's just an outstanding technique in open field tackling. Uh, Freenoff definitely uh, was not going to let the man go. Jason Hurd drives in behind left tackle. And is stopped by number 77 on the bottom of that play. Eric Deutsch 
310 pounder for the Cowboys. Not before Hurd picks up. Scrambles forward there, picks up about three. It'll be second down and seven. The good news for the Wildcats is, that, is Jason Garner is definitely in the in the huddle here, and that's that's a, that's a good sign. Yep. Watching the replay, it didn't look like he had any footing problems or any type of strain. There's a full house backfield by There's the Wildcats. Second man through. Second man through. Can he get? Well, that's that's Jason. a lot of personal that's a lot of personal perseverance right there. Jason Hurd picks up the first down for the Wildcats. I talked to Jason yesterday in the, in the hallway at school, and I'll tell you, he had a look in his eye, and he said, if we, we can determine our own fate, and if we keep with our heads in the game, then we have a chance. And he basically said it. They just, they're not going to have to be over-psyched, and they're not going to have to be psyched out by a, a Wyoming power. And he I said talked to, uh, I saw Santino and Lambert down at the fireworks, and uh, he basically said the same thing. Uh, that was last week, you know, and, and uh, coming off that second win. This is a big thing for the Finneytown kids. They, they haven't been in this position for a long time, and, uh, you know, obviously they're excited. It wasn't that many years ago. I was trying to remember this afternoon when it was the last time that Finneytown beat Wyoming. I believe it was about four, maybe five years ago. Uh, and... Uh, uh, that doesn't happen very often, and they see the possibility of it this year. A little wing to the right. There's like gonna try the Gardner's going to try and come outside. Got a completion to Jason. Jason Hurd. It's going to be a couple yards shy of the first down. And he picks up maybe five on that play. Oh, picks up a couple on the play. Brings up third and well, it'll be about third. Oh, got more than I thought he did. Third and seven. Uh, well, we're moving the sticks now. I think the, the sticks of the post on the far side is not quite accurate, but mm -hmm. third and three, I would say, for the first for the Wildcats. The ball's still in their own territory. Hey, all right, nice job. Earth. Breaks through, breaks a couple more tackles. Kid runs hard, Andy. I'm impressed. This is the first time I've seen him run this way. Impressive running game. Get the ball down on the ground. There's a consistency in the attack. Very impressive. Well, he's a solid 5'9, 185, and uh, I've seen his work ethic in the weight room. And I'll tell you right now, the, the, he's, he's got strength. He has definitely leg strength. Uh, type of an Emmett Smith runner, straight ahead, not a lot of side to side. Uh, he's, 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 he's got a little change of pace in there, though, that helps. First down the, at the Wyoming 42 yard line. Oh, big tackle. Big defensive play there by number 59. That's uh, that Zach. Bukavales oh, you try that one. You take That's that one. Bukavales. Bukavales. All right. I'm glad you're here. I could have messed with that one all night. But yeah, Bukavales listed at 190. I'm taking a look at his size, and uh, they may be about 20 pounds shy on him. He's pretty good size. He's kid. pretty good size. Yeah. Uh, though it's uh, it's pretty hard to tell on all that equipment. Now, if I saw him in a wrestling singlet, I could <laughs> tell you about within four pounds of what he weighs, Andy. These guys hide out there in all that equipment. You can't see what they really are. Officials time out, checking a chin strap on Jason Hurd, who's playing out at the left slot. It's interesting, they, uh, the coaching staff, the Finneytown coaching staff moves people around very effectively and creates all kinds of things. I suspect they didn't want that to happen because I, I would think they want him out there without really Wyoming noticing the fact that it's heard out there. <laughs> yeah, this one, well, doesn't look like they're going to change the play. Looks like, a J well, Jason Gardner's looking over at the side. Single, single back backfield, Gardner back. That, try the trap. Ogle tree. No almost full. Ooh. Boy, he almost lost the handle on that one in there. Either Jason was been taking some theatrics or uh Mike they, Nagel on the tackle for the for Cowboys. Jason's taking theatrics. Well, I'm trying to watch he's doing a little bit of gamesmanship. He's starting to uh was taking a look at Hurt all the way prior to the play. Oh yeah. And then all of a sudden they try yeah. and run the, the delay trap. I understand Burke. McCollum, uh, <laughs> drama coach here at Finneytown, uh, has uh, been seen at practice lately. <laughs> <laughs> Ogletree has to come out. Looks like he's got a ripped open elbow here. Bandage that up, pour some Clorox on it, clean it right away. And that, that's the 
The Wildcats return to play third and 13. Okay, we've got 90 Balls seconds about here. the 46. Pitch to Hurd. Breaks outside. Doesn't quite get back to the line of scrimmage. That lead block just didn't emerge for him on that play. The pitch to the left side. Uh, guard pulling out. I think it was Travis Besser pulling off, the, off of the right guard trying to give him a lead block. Just didn't get over in time. That's a big go. Uh, that's a big guy pulling when you stop and think of Bobby Combs coming over there. That's some good size in there. there. There's some big old boys in there for the Wildcats. Travis listed 6'3 and 285. Is, is definitely every bit of that. Solid work ethic. Good student. Good kid all around. Okay, we've got a delay of game against the Wildcats. Uh, might as well move the ball back five. You're going to punt. So if you if you move it back five, you got a chance to hang the ball uh, and uh, put. They ran time off the clock that Wyoming can't use, and now he's going to try and hang the ball as much as possible and back for the. Dantzler and, and Shelton. Shelton, and Shelton back deep. Back. Oh, he got a nice leg into this one. Good hang time. Yeah, yeah. they cover it. Ooh, ooh, that's not good, fellas. Ran into his own man before he's finally driven out of bounds over there. Dantzler, pushed him out. That's number 45. Uh, B.J. Lambert. Yep, B.J. Lambert. Well, the well, Cowboys have about 30 seconds to go and about uh, 60 yards to pay dirt, 65 yards to pay dirt. Yeah, about, about that, about 65. It's We've pretty, already uh, broken one 49-yarder this uh, this evening. That's, uh, yeah, and they did it on the ground. You would expect to be going in the air here. Uh, if they uh, if they if they go in the air, I suspect that's what they're going to be looking like. I see Ogletree's ready to go back in. Jason Hurd coming Jason out. Jason Hurd going out on the field. No, apparently they're, to they're going with the double tied end with two and one in motion. There goes a man on motion. That's Santino Lambert going and covering the flat man. There's right in the open. Lewis throws the ball on that. That's it. There's good, good coaching being done there uh, by the uh, Wyoming coaches. Even though that wasn't a lateral, notice that the very first thing that uh, uh, Dupe does is turn around and grab the ball because he isn't sure. You know, he's going he's gonna to go back to that ball right now. And, and I've seen that happen a number of occasions where a guy drops a ball out there and thinks, oh, it's a, you know, it's incomplete, but it's a lateral. And, and the other team has gotten the, gotten the ball back. Well, second and ten. And they did the worst waste of time then on the incomplete. There it is right the middle. Same play that's Yep, that's the one that that's the one that broke for the that's go ahead broke. touchdown. Mm -hmm. Wyoming calls timeout, trying to conserve the clock. They've got 21 seconds left. There you see Lewis under center gets the snap. Pope almost lost that. That, that almost went through. It, ca it, it came through the side there, didn't it? Yeah, right. Not a very clean handoff. Well, actually, the center exchange wasn't real, real sharp there. I noticed the looked like the center was moving out, and uh, Lewis wasn't quite with him on the uh, as the as the ball was snapped. It's going to be interesting to see how uh, how the Wildcats come back in the second half. No matter what happens in the next couple of plays, they they ought to feel pretty pretty daggone good about how they're playing right now. I still don't see uh, Jason Gardner doing any type of stretching or anything like that, so I don't think. I think he's. Good. I think he's okay. I think he just got. I think he just got. Uh, uh, like you said, he got a little bit of a stinger. Okay, third and four with 21 seconds left. My guess is they're going to try to pay off left tackle. That's probably not a bad bet. I don't think Coach Barry is going to throw the ball. Right tackle. Yeah, he's going. He's content yeah. to go in at the half. He may even. I think they're going to call a timeout again. They're going to try at least one more play. It looks like. He may. They do have a. They had a place kicker at the beginning of the season to kick 35 yards, but I don't see him out there. Uh, uh, it was a. I'm trying to think what his name was. Uh, Kazbuki 
or something to that effect. Had a 32-yard field goal. Lewis just spiking the ball just to stop the clock. With 12 seconds remaining in this first half. Well, we're, uh, we see uh, the Wildcats are, are you, you can't let down at this point. The Coach Barry has been around a long time and he is a master of deception. This is when you look for something a little bit weird to pop out, uh, but not too dangerous. You know, it's got to go up the field and, and uh, he's got pretty emotion. well spread. He's got a, he's only got one running back left back there. He's Lewis is back. He's got one. four They're out. Lofting. There's a there's San. Oh, nice boy. defense. Jason Hurd breaks the pass up and uh, does a good job of it. How many times do you a, see the tailback that, taking the tailback? I was going to say that's a great matchup, <laughs> isn't it? <laughs> it's a great matchup. Again, a pretty safe play for Wyoming. Yep. A little daring. Yeah. 35 yard uh, puts pass. it down the field, puts it up the field where uh, you know even if it's intercepted, you're not going to run it all the way back. I don't think. Well, they were uh, that uh, that was the matchup. I, I have to believe they were hoping for Dupe against her, the height. Yeah. Uh, and speed, but again, well, I think, a nice play. Well, I don't know. I think Hurd can run with Dupe. I don't think Dupe's. A, a, any faster than, than, than Hurd. More considering about the, the high situation. Yeah, got I, I would agree. There. Yeah. So they're going to try it again. Lewis going to come back and go again with he's it. Gonna go down. And he's going to get That's gonna do tackled it. for a loss. That's uh, Mike Hall. Mike Hall. Tackle. Well, we're going we're gonna to see this, uh, this last pass attempt here by Kyle Lewis. He makes his drop, sets up. He never got his feet set. He was turning with the with his body square rather than getting his his hips turned. Well, we're gonna take a break here at the half and let the bands take the field, and we'll be back with the second half of action with the Cowboys of Wyoming leading the Finneytown Wildcats 13-7. When the nation calls, you can make a difference and be a part of it all. Find yourself in the Army National Guard, serving one weekend a month and two weeks a year, and you'll find an extra paycheck, money for college, and all the adventure you can handle. Call 1-800-GO-GUARD. In the Army National Guard, you can.
welcome back to the second half of the Finneytown Wyoming football game. The Cowboys lead 13-7. Real quick recap of the first half. Uh, the, uh, the the game has been a, a, a Andy, what would you say? This is to me, it's been a, an extremely balanced game I'll between two a, teams that are very mm -hmm. similar. Exactly, it's been a, it's been a classic running game for both squads. Uh, lots of pulls, lots of traps, power running, using your strengths, not trying to get too fancy. It's just been a very well played. We've got a misplaced. Uh, oh, that's uh, definitely not Aaron Cummings. That's that's not Aaron Cummings there. <laughs> that's <laughs> that's that's Finney Towns. That's Finney Town's new head coach, Bruce Dixon. Uh, and uh, he's he's in this ball game. But anyway, Wyoming opened the scoring in the first half, taking the ball on the Finney Town 30 and, uh, and in about nine plays. David David Dupay carried the ball in with 6-15. They kicked the extra point. Finney Town returned the favor when uh, Bobby Combs recovered a Wyoming fumble inside the Wyoming 25. And uh, the Wildcats carried it in. Jason Hurd traveling on the last 17 yards. Finney Town's kick goes out of the end zone. They bring it out to the 20-yard uh, line. I'll tell you, that Horwood's got a leg on him. Yes, he does. I've seen him play a couple soccer games this year, uh, playing on the right uh, striker, right wing side for the offense of Finneytown. Mm -hmm. And I'll tell you what, he's utilizing that soccer kick very effectively in a football manner now. Well, then Finneytown appeared to stop the Cowboys in the first half at midfield with about six minutes left. But then again, David Dupay blew it up the middle on a fourth and one and covered 49 yards, giving Wyoming the lead. They missed the extra point, and the score is 13-7 at this point with Wyoming with a ball at their own 20. First and 10, and David Dupay starts the second half with a uh, playoff tackle. They've been running that in the first half, and uh, they came back to it without much success this time. Bobby Combs beat the block that time, and wrapped up to pay pretty well and it looked like if I'm not mistaken Jason Gardner stepped up to assist Combs on that well but now this has been a mark of uh, Wyoming uh, forever is that the second half they make they make great adjustments their coaching staff makes great adjustments at halftime and they come out and they usually blow teams out in the second half this first series is very important for the Wildcats well, and they're David Dupay once carries again. again. Looks like the Wildcats were starting off in a 4-3. Kind of a spread 4-3. Maybe pull. No, that's that's uh, that's uh, Scott Kreider, Kreider on Kreider the carrier that, that time. Third and five for the uh, for the Wyoming Cowboys. Lewis brings him under the uh, comes up under the ball under the center. His pitch and options down it. the line. Keeps the ball. It looks like that's uh, that's not a first down. That's for sure. He's about a yard short. It'll be fourth and one. Ball on the Wyoming 29 yard line. On the replay, as we can see, Lewis pulling. And again, it looked like on that pull, they just did not get the lead block. They pulled number 59. I believe that's uh, Chris Chris Henning. He was the lead blocker on that, just did not get out in time. I think the defensive end kind of sealed that down in there, kind of stuffed the block in the hole. Going to punt. Neil Smiley punting for Wyoming. And a fair catch called for and taken by Number four, Drew Rickley, Rightley. And it'll be first and 10 for the Wildcats at the 45-yard line of uh, Finneytown. That's great field position. That's a good series to start the second half. Whoops, we've got to get it at the 40. Well, 39. Not, not just the fact that the Finneytown uh, Wildcat defense was able to stop Wyoming, but also to st not let them progress at all down the field. Uh, we've got great position, field position starting off for first series of the second half. Jason Hurd tries to turn right end without much success. Good containment. Uh, good containment by the Wyoming defensive end. We'll see this again. Yeah, now nice lateral movement from the Cowboy defense. As you see, they get off the ball well. You've got two people in your backfield already. But uh, good team defense. Nice lateral movement spreading seven, out. Uh, 
in there. Rod Shel Ryan Shelton on the stop for Wyoming. Lost. There the he's Wildcats. open. He's wide, wide open. open. The tree. Up the sideline. He's going hard. Takes it all the way into the Wyoming 30-yard line. They the caught Wyoming. Yard line. They caught Wyoming on a blitz, on a safety blitz. Gardner checked off of his primary receiver, which I believe was Hurd. Watch you'll see him come back. There's the fake handoff to Hurd. Hurd dove in there, but he, that wasn't a real good fake even. Wyoming bit on a on a only a partial fake. That's kind of surprising. They caught him on a blitz though. That yeah, was the entire. <laughs> That's a big game for the Wildcats. Boy, it'd be a big thing for him to come up and and uh, go ahead here. And, There's your full house backfield again. Yep. We'll go back to power again. There's Jason Hurd. And a great job defensively there by uh, 21, Eric Taylor. Uh, did a great job of turning that play in and, and uh, kind of slowing that whole thing down because there was a lot of room to run if he hadn't made that play. Gain of about two. But I'll tell you what the pass, what Jason Gardner has done is just shown Wyoming another little card. Hey, we can't open oh, yeah. it up if we need to. Oh, yeah. And that's going to force right. them to come out of that. Full house backfield. Here's Ogletree. Ogletree, first man. I, I really have to say that it's uh, fun watching this Finneytown football team. There's a consistency in what they're doing. Uh, they seem to be playing within themselves. They're not trying to do too much. Uh, they're doing the good things at the right times. Uh, that that little flare pass out here was the play action pass was a great call, and uh, and and they're they're in this ball game. Again, the blitz. Uh, He's on the ground. Ogletree uh, again on that one. That that didn't that didn't go very well. Well, let's see if we get, let's see if we got this one. Let's see if uh, see if Uncle Tree was down on the replay. You know that that was pretty close. That wasn't as far off as uh, you thought uh, when I first saw it. I, but he, what, the whistle must have. Blown. I think there was. Yeah, I think there was an earlier whistle. I heard one late. Let's check it again. Talk about a, not having a good control on the ball. Ogletree did not have a good. That ball's loose. Garner back. Oh, dump pass. Oh. <laughs> Heard is greeted by a, ho a host that was of Cowboys. Not, that was not th the way uh, Jason Gardner wanted to be able to release that ball. I'll tell you that. Uh, it did not want to, to have to do that. Ball goes over to the Cowboys on downs. Finneytown's only uh, flip-flopping four players from offense to defense. I haven't gotten a count on the Wyoming uh, crossover, but it's not much better. But that's a that's tough. That's one of the tough things when you go against teams that run a lot of fresh troops in there. The mm -hmm. second half gets pretty tough. Although tonight the weather is perfect, so that shouldn't be a factor. And, and Wyoming comes back. It's uh, Stuart Patch, the receiver on that. This may be Wyoming's attempt to try and uh, spread out the. Yep. Down defense. Gotta, they got to do something too because the Wildcats certainly came in and stuffed their running game there at the at the start of the half. Again, I'll tell you what's funny is Santino Lambert was on that play. He is reading the Wyoming quarterback very well. He may he may take a chance on one or two of these. There's the dive. Dupe. Uh, off left tackle or, and uh, stumbles forward. We have a disagreement over the pronunciation of the lad's name. I think it's Dupe. Other people are calling him Dupe. If it, if it is Dupe, we apologize, but we think we got it right. The uh, ball is uh, now at the Wyoming 30. 35 yard line. Again, back. Oh. Pass out there intended for uh, Zach Novak. That was not a well thrown ball. He turned him, he turned Novak around three times on that one. No, Lewis, uh, I think he was trying to trying to force a quick gain. I think Zach Novak is, uh, is uh, 
you know he's he's really a, a fearsome receiver out there but uh, frankly at this point his his uh, contribution has been more in the area of uh, his defense than, than his offense so far and not that I'm hoping that he does <laughs> but <laughs> And Lewis back to pass again. He's going. And the pass is incomplete, overthrown. It's, uh, well, what we've seen out of, out of the, the Cowboy passing Mike Harris game, back there on they the may want to go back to the power running game. He's just not connected. Well, I think I think that uh, they're they're trying to find. Uh, uh, when I said that they make adjustments in the, at the half, they usually do that very effectively, and it looks like. Finneytown had made some adjustments that are frustra that's frustrating the the Wyoming adjustments because they obviously wanted to come out and run the ball early. Although Bernie will, uh, Coach Barry has a tendency to be very conservative in the shadow of his own goalpost too. Got patch in motion. There's Lewis dropping back screen. Nobody that's over there. Oh, good call. Yeah, just about back to a first down. Maybe does have the first down. Yeah, it looks like they got the first down. Looks like it. That's a good call. Boy, Finneytown's defense sure got suckered on that one because everybody went went right, well left to the defensive. Well move. designed play. Well designed play. Yep, he had two blockers and uh, no defenders. That's uh, to me is a pretty great advantage. Finneytown fortunate that uh, was only a 10 yard gain. Yeah, Eric Elmendorf finally got back in there to uh, finish the, 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 the defensive work. But it gives Wyoming a new set of downs on the Wyoming 45. Nice. Oh, he broke out of there. Got to give him credit. He, he busted that first tackle. That's P.J. Gain Pope. Of, gain of five. Pope. Uh, Able to swing out off a left, you know, his left tackle on that. He's the one that picked the 49 he's, yard. Hope is the one who scored the 49 I, I mean, yard. That's, right. That's right. That's that's a mistake. I had the wrong guy for that in the first first half. And we got uh, Finneytown timeout. Defense, I believe, is going just to take a little second and maybe regroup a little bit. I think this is a good this is a good call from the coaching staff. A uh, note of uh, interest to Finneytown fans on Sunday, October 3rd, the Boosters will be holding their, um, what do they call this thing? Well, it's a scramble, golf scramble uh, for the Boosters Club. If you're interested in this, you ought to get a hold of Rick Meter. His telephone number is 541-7162. Finneytown Boosters shotgun scramble and golf outing. And... Uh, it's a pretty good, uh, pretty good event. Lots of fun, prizes, food, etc. Rick Meter, 541-7162. Equally importantly, uh, would be remiss if we didn't mention that Finneytown is uh, starting its uh, Hall of Fame movement here this year. It will be inducting its first ever class uh, in a, in a, into a Hall of Fame, starting with the uh, school back in the 60s, coming up to the present, and if. Uh, people have in mind a person in athletics and this is obviously the heart of the thing uh, or in the fields of the performing arts in uh, career achievement or in volunteerism if you can think of someone uh, that you think should be nominated please call Dr. Joseph Speaks principal at Finneytown and uh, give him the information the committee will be glad to take a look at your nomination there we saw a defensive adjustment being made. They dropped that. They dropped the uh, cornerback into uh, almost a, a monster back position. I believe it was Jason Hurd that they brought in from a cornerback position to spread this one out. Ogletree involved. No, Santino Lambert. Yeah, Number Lambert. two, Santino yeah. Lambert. They brought him on the other side, almost like a monster back rover type of position on that play. I was talking before the game uh, this, this evening with uh, with Bruce Dixon and uh, one of the things I asked him about this is that you know what do you how do you figure to what are you what are you going to do to beat Wyoming 
You see, you know, I, I, I don't worry about what Wyoming's going to do. I worry about what we do, and we're going to do what we do, and we're going to try and do it as well as we can. And I think that's a very healthy attitude. He's got a lot of good athletes out there that can, uh, you know, perform exceptionally well. This is the kind of game David that they Dupay need to do gets so. stacked up again. Uh, well, I'll tell you what, th this is Pope. Uh, uh, this is Pope on, on the play here. Yeah. And they, I wonder if Dupay, if something is wrong, because for the past three or four critical rushing downs where it's been third and short. That's an interesting point, Andy. Uh, Dupay has not carried the ball in those critical situations. Yeah. He's in there. He He's just came there. on the field late. Mm -hmm. Sail out, sail out. Oh, my goodness. Oh, that was a serious mistake. My, oh, my. Never, oh. never. Over oh, your bed like oh, that. oh. That gives uh, coaches uh, uh, gray hair or lose <laughs> their hair or. Here we go again with this replay. Add one Drew more Reitley. two of those gray hairs. Ball's really hanging up there. Just completely dead. I think that really fooled him. I thought he. I think the ball took off on him or something or he lost it in the light. I don't know, but that he was not in good position to, to, to cover it, to, to field it. That's going to take it down to about the five yard line. It's not a good place to start. This really bad field position. This is a measure of the team's uh, courage right here. Well, and again, they're not showing anything but run, so. Respectable. I guess if game. you're, I guess if you're, uh, I guess if you're backed up in your goal line down there, you give it to the guy that's your most dependable runner and try and squeeze something out of it anyway. Hurt's Picked up, up about slow. two. Hurts getting up a little slow. He's cramped. I don't know if that's a cramp. He stopped and gave it a good little stretch. Even with the cool temperatures on a night like this, it'll, it'll give you some trouble. Try to sweep it to the left. No, no particular success. Get hurt coming off the left tackle on the sweep. Well, that brings a third, a loss, a, actually a loss a yard on that. Uh, be a third and nine. Santino Lambert coming in to join the running game. Let's see if uh, puts a little speed out there. Puts a little speed. Say you that. got Ogletree, Hurd, and Lambert. Boy, that's back. dangerous back in there. You can't handle the ball too much. Oh, break through that. Break through that. Ogletree, Ogletree slams up through there. It's going to be doing close. a lot of work on his own. I don't know no. if he. I uh, don't think he got no, enough. No, no. What I was looking for was uh, we heard a. Let's see on this replay, see if there was a face mask. Yeah, there we are people are commenting on that. There are people commenting on this see, one. Comes up through the the good hole at the line of scrimmage. Now he's underneath. Yeah, he's on the he's on the shoulder pad. Nice camera angle. He was underneath on the shoulder yeah, pad. Right. There's a beautiful camera. The, uh, it's uh, 21 Eric Taylor in there trying to strip the ball from Ogletree. I'll tell you what, down, Ogletree. Gardner back to punt. Oh God. That almost covered well. That was almost trouble. Eric Dantzler with the ball. Uh oh. Uh oh. Boy, he is tough to bring down. He's leaving a trail of bodies chasing him. He had that one called back in the first half that uh, was uh, an even better run than this one, but he is tough. That was uh, that was an impressive run. Watch him cut back. You get great broken field running here. Look at this cut. Look at that. That is that's athleticism. Double shake and bake. Spins off. Keeps driving forward. Great run. Trying to force. Great run. Jason Gardner the was tackles. the last one there, but that gives the Cowboys the ball. Uh, what is the, boy, this is a tremendous field things. position. Great defense. Uh -oh. We're going to get a flag uh -oh. on this one. A little extracurricular at the end of this play. Let's see what this is. See what this is here. Got to pay off of left tackle. Missed tackle right there in there. the backfield. Let's see if we can keep this. No, nope. we don't see. They picked the flag up. He picked it up. It looked like he was going to call a 
personal a late foul. hit or something. I don't know what it was. I never did see what they thought it was. I believe at the at the end of the play, Travis Besser had his hand up in uh, one of the offensive linemen's face mask. I was watching number 71 on that far right side, and it looked like maybe it uh, just a little little temper going there. Oh, he oh. almost had it. Oh. Uh, both of them almost had it. Uh, all, uh, Ryan Shelton uh, had a shot at it, and uh, and Jason Gardner had a shot at it both. Uh, it would have been nice if Gardner would have gotten to that one because there was nothing between him and the other end zone. The Wildcat line is doing a lot of stunning. Trying yeah, to find that they're lane. blowing a lot of people up in there trying to overwhelm the interior of the Wyoming line. Combs and Bess are doing a nice job coming off the coming off the initial block. Again, they're stuffing right up Ogletree, the middle. Ogletree right up the middle. Ah! Well, Gardner. Jason Gardner just delivered a lick out there. Uh, Gardner, the nice hit. <laughs> oh, we've got that. Stuart on the, Patch. Uh, Stuart Patch. Stuart Patch is. Let's watch is this. Wondering. Patch is hurt. Wait a minute. Did I get hit by a? Did I get hit by a linebacker? No, you got hit by a quarterback. Watch this. This is a great hit in here at the end. There, Patch has got the ball. It's a good pass. Lambert with misses there. Oh. Gardner knocks him right up off his feet. Oh, lowered the smart, shoulder, especially on that. I field. don't think Patch was expecting him to try and stand him up straight up because he <laughs> turned right into him. Yeah, that uh, on that field, that that's, do it. That take, that's the end of the quarter. Boy, that went by in a hurry, didn't it? Well, when you got two running games that, that are being fairly successful, the clock yeah. keeps going for quite. Listen, a there's a bunch of guys working this game out here, Andy. I got to make mention of because these guys have been working Finneytown football games for. I know some of them have been working now 20 years. And uh, the, I think the youngest guy out here has five years of experience on the chain gangs. But I want to take a tip of the hat to Bob Apke, Hank Schwarz, Ken Schwarz, Jim Frecka, uh, and the head chain gang guy himself, Barry Berman. Barry, Barry I know, has been here 20 years. Actually, I normally, I, those are their real names. They're usually referred to as Larry, Curly, Mo, Harpo, and Groucho. <laughs> and uh, really, they're, they're more, they're, there they are. There, there they are. There's, there's Barry holding the, the one down marker. There's uh, Hank Schwarz out there in front. Tom Freck is giving directions. And uh, there's Kenny Schwarz back there holding the clip. He's got a really important job. But you can see that Hank, Hank really works hard. He stands with his hands in his pockets the whole time. That's uh, Hank pointing across the field. <laughs> what a great bunch of guys. These guys really, they're here no matter what the weather, no matter what the conditions, they're here. And they do a great job. There's the crew upstairs uh, here in the press box. And we return to action. Wyoming's Going into the last quarter. Wyoming again going back to that power run. You got second and goal here. Uh, the ball's on about the, what is that, the three? I can't really quite tell. Boy, they're in the shadow. That's about the, that's about the three yard line. You know, well now, is that or, or is that the six? I can't see. I'm trying oh, to, that's the six. That's, that's the six. That's the so six. Yep. So they're looking at three different sets of lines. Oh, Lewis on the, uh, there's the option. And that's, they're back to, uh, they're back to uh, B.J. Pope. Pope. And Jason Gardner on the tackle. Jason Gardner's getting a workout out there tonight. He's, he's been knocked down, tomorrow. beat up, and now he's out there selling his body defensively. Pulls the ball out, comes down the line, looks. There's Vesher out. It's about to be head. Kyle Lewis. Oh, that time I think Jason Gardner got the worst of that one. Oh, I wish he wouldn't put his head Let's down. Put his head down. Yeah, he's got to. He's got to tackle straight up. But what the what the Wildcats did that time is they utilized their speed to spread out that that option. That option was spread out, had no place to go, and then all of a sudden Gardner comes in to stuff out the the one lane that well, that Pope had. This third down. Third down and goal. There's pitch outside pitch out. to Pope. It's spread out. They've got him. They've, They've got, got, it. got They've him. Got, they stopped. Oh, what are you being picked up yardage again? Gardner on the tackle again, but Pope falls forward, takes the ball down. They're putting the 
stick down at the one yard line. This is gonna be an interesting call. There's, there's Bobby Apke over there. He's got the he's got that down marker. I think uh, I th the Wyoming call a timeout on this one, I believe. We've no got time. Lewis talking to the coaching staff. This is an interesting call. This can either give the Wildcats the momentum to possibly pull did, this one They out. called time. They, well, I think they had to. The play clock was definitely running yeah, down. Yeah, there's, there's, there's some concern over there on the Wyoming sideline on what they want to call. I don't know. I, I With uh, under just under 10 minutes to go, I think I'd have to take, take a chance on this one. Well, I believe, I believe that's the place kicker. No. It's not like watching a pro game. Sometimes the high school 31. kicking game is just not uh, is just not as Stupé precise. and Pope are both out there. Well, Lewis has run back twice now to the coaching staff and then back to the huddle. Well, are they drawn this one up in the dirt out there, Andy? If they had chalk dust out there, it's on the ground. Sometimes those work pretty well. Not very often. Not very often. <laughs> <laughs> Johnny, go down to the flag. Yeah, I'll go hit run you over there. there. Yeah. Go to the second car. <laughs> hang a left. Well, <clears throat> I tell you, the uh, it's uh, this has been this is pretty impressive. The uh, Wildcats are in here. They've got a they've got a fourth and one on their uh, fourth and one, and uh, this is when you got to call. On all the reserves you got. It's when this you is, dig in and this is pull up run time. it out. And Pope's in. Pope into the end zone. Why uh, Wyoming went back to that uh, to the power game, brought three backs into the backfield and loaded up the front line. Yeah, and uh, he wasn't touched. He isn't touched. Here we're gonna see this again. Can you use what's your best bet? Now your best Best game. Look at that Good double block. block. Oh, Boy, nice. What a great Dupe, double. Dupe. And Boy, what a beautiful block. If we can come back and see that block again, can we see that I believe that, that was Dupe and Kreider both. Oh, that Dupe was and a, I, think, I know Kreider was in there with a great lead block. Nice. Going to go for the PAT. Going to go for I think two. I'm going to go for two on this one. Yeah. And we just uh, we oh, just this is this is interesting. This is this is two timeouts. That's two timeouts. That's burning timeouts in a hurry. Well, I just overheard someone from the ceiling. We just heard it. We just heard a comment from upstairs that said the, they called the wrong formation. Oh. Now uh, that was said with a little bit of anger. <laughs> now I tend to believe that uh, someone may be getting uh, a talk to, to about me, that. Do you mean to tell me that you're actually? listening to what the Wyoming coaching staff is doing upstairs. That time, that <laughs> that was just a little unmistakable. <laughs> I think that's because the coach turned around away from the field <laughs> and made some comment to the back wall. He, he must have. Uh, that, that, uh, and that shows good thinking on the coach's part. But you're right about that second time out. You know, when you're left with... Burn two left already. With, uh, just one with still 10 minutes to go in this game. Yep. And... Take a look at the score. You're talking a 12-point lead now. If they are not successful with this two-point conversion, yeah. you know anything well, can happen. This is, this, is, this, is really a, this is really a tough thing for the Wildcats because this puts them in a really tough situation now. And uh, they, they got themselves into trouble out there. Oh, reverse. Is he going to get out? He made successful. it. Nice call. Who is that? B Pope There's again. Pope again. PJ Pope. Pope. Uh, Pope is uh, Pope is being the main man tonight, isn't he? They start out with Dupe and then come back with Pope. That's uh, nice when you've got a couple of them running back there. 5'10", 190 pounds sophomore. Pope uh, lighting it up for the Cowboys this evening. Again, it's, I was talking to Coach Barry before the game, and, and uh, that we were talking about that very thing. I said, you know, some of these guys don't have very much experience. It, but it always seems to me that, that, that you reload it. And he said, you know what it is? It's that these guys expect to be successful. And, and, and they, they know when they come in and they get the chance, they've got to produce. And, and that's, you know, that's the tradition that, that carries you through. Anyway, with uh, 9.55 remaining in the, in the game, the Cowboys are on top 21-7. And uh, things are not looking good for the Wildcats right now. Well, it's time Need to, to get something going here. 
Again, the Wyoming is kicked off every single time. Rather short. Uh, it looks like Finneytown is lining up exactly for a short kick. Maybe they can get the wedge. Get a quick scoring it back into this. Line drive, short kick, straight to Mike Harris. Mike Harris. Unfortunately, just no no help. Yep. <coughs> Nobody was uh, slowed up or bumped to the outside on that return. They didn't have the patience to form the wedge. A line drive kick like that gives you a little bit of time. Well, the Wildcats uh, come out and take the ball. They, that was pretty good. That was pretty good return actually it gives them fairly good position it moves them up here to a uh, well, a lot better than the last possession off that punt which had them pinned back to their own five yeah 25 yard line first and ten oh 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 what a great catch nice. what a, boy that was hurt. remarkable that he held on to that what a remarkable catch and run Jason Hurd Boy, that was brilliant. That is that is fine football. Look at him smile and shake that head. <laughs> That's a fine, fine catch. Watch this again, folks, as he's hit just as he catches it. Ooh, spins Spin. off it. He's got the ball covered up already. That's a great job. Then then beats another tackler, beats another tackler. That's three. And now it takes three more to bring him down. Great job, Jason. Well, it gets him out, gets him a little bit of space. Ogletree. There's nice. Eric Ogletree. Slams off right tackle. Gains about four on the play. That's a good call coming back. Give uh, not give a little rest to some of the running backs. Ogletree coming in and just doing a nice little dive right up yep. the middle. But the time is not on the Finneytown Wildcat no, side right not. now. Nine, Nine minutes, minutes to go. Need to have something happen in a hurry. Need to cover 50 yards right now. Hurd is one-on-one -on -one with this keeper, and Gardner's watching him. Timing pass. He's got him. Got him. Oh, oh, just. Well. I was watching him do this. Gardner's tapping himself, saying, my bad. No, Jason, that was a daggone good call. It was a good call. That was, was a good, mature call. It wasn't call. particularly executed. The ball, the ball got away. With with time, that uh, that type of that type of play it, is going to work. He threw it in the right direction. It, it took off on the outside. On. He called that from the line of scrimmage. Just out. The idea, Just out was, the idea was very solid. If he if they cut that back into the middle, it's six. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, third and uh, seven. You know what? They may try this on the left side. It's flare. No. Heard. He's got to get out. He's got to get out. Get no, that. he's not going to get it. That uh, produced a loss. Um, and it brings up a fourth down. Unfortunate. Unfortunate. So we fourth and seven. That first one, that, that second down pass would have uh, fallen. That that would have been a that would have really turned things around. What do you think? Any uh, any trickery? No, I don't think so. I don't think so. I don't think that's uh, I don't think that's characteristic of, 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 of Gardner gets of off attitude. a nice punt. It's going to bounce out bounce somewhere out around about the twenty. Right at the twenty, it looks like. Uh, a a turnover here would help. Oh, definitely. <laughs> a couple turnovers hey, would they, help. Wyoming uh, has been forced twice this game. One recovered. And yes, and, and that's the, right. Well, and they, they've not had the cleanest of, of handoffs. No, there have been a lot of times that ball has been uh, in, in precarious uh, situations. But the Cowboys have the ball. They have the lead. Uh, it's 7.57. Ball's on the Wyoming 20. And Finneytown's looking to get something back real fast, and they nice. stack the middle up. I don't think you're going to see much but running up. Uh, between the tackles, I think. I gonna, think that's it. I think well, you may, you may find some stuff running around to the outside just to, you know, keep going but not go out of bounds. This clock is going to be burning for a while. A gain of one, second and nine. 
If I, I'll tell you what. Finneytown is doing what I think they're doing. They are going to do another one of these middle linebacker stunts where they're going to start cramming in here. They may get an opportunity to strip a ball. Right there. Well, they, they're, they're jamming the middle. Mm -hmm. Wyoming is running the middle. Uh, and Wyoming's letting the clock run. We're down to seven minutes. Well, actually, seven minutes isn't bad. No, again, you're, you're talking uh, with, the, with the speed that the Wildcats have in the backfield. You know, they could break one at any time. Yeah, uh, you know, uh, what would be really nice would be to force Wyoming to punt and get a run back and go on side exactly. and, and uh, you're right back in it. But again, it goes back to, to what Jason Hurd told me. Hey, we've got to make our own breaks. We can't rely on breaks falling into our hands. Oh, yeah. Wyoming doesn't give you anything. Never have, never will. There's Kyle. There's Pope Back, off of and the, Pope they on pick the up the first down, and that really hurt. Yes. For that, that hurt the Wildcats anyway. Mm -hmm. uh, it uh, it was good for the Cowboys, but uh, for Finneytown, that's not a good thing. Kyle Lewis comes back, takes his drop, turns, sets, makes a nice clean patch pass. Lewis does a nice job of bringing that ball back and switching fields. You know, really does. you know that that's again experience coming in here. The kid kid took this team all the way to the state semifinals last year. Mm -hmm. You've been in tough situations. Nobody got rattled. You just keep playing your game, and that's the mark of success. You know, again, trying to, re to fill the shoes of someone like Richard Hall. There's probably a lot of weight on some of these guys' shoulders, maybe oh. with a chip or two, to say, look, we are a solid ball club without, yeah. Oh, without yeah. him. Yeah, oh, yeah, sure. And they are. Sure. Sure. Several nice articles written in the Inquirer the past couple weeks about that situation, about how instead of trying to rebuild, you reload, and the mentality of reloading instead of rebuilding. Yeah. This is interesting. Up by two touchdowns. Got the clock on your side. Draw. Trying to spread them out. He's trying to get that middle loosened up a little bit so that they can run the mm -hmm. clock down a little bit more. They got a first down on that one. Again, the clock's going to keep ticking. We're down to 518. Time stops at the first down so the chains can move. Speaking of the supporting cast of what makes a football game successful, Waycross Community Media is very proud of our volunteers and people come out to help bring this type of game to you. All the videographers are volunteers from the Waycross Community Media. Yeah, and a lot of them are uh, very close to you, Andy. The, this is a lot of the Fitting Down Video Club out here. Yeah, two of the videographers uh, happen to be part of my video club here and very proud of their work and their efforts. And I'm very, very happy to say uh, the director, Tony Suarez, has uh, been a very, very excellent mentor to some of these kids. And as you're watching the replays, you're watching the game going on, you know, it looks it may look easy on TV, but once you get uh, seventh of grade on up to twelfth grade students learning how to do this and then learning how to cope in a situation like this, it's a pressure-filled situation. And Tony does a great job with the kids, and my hats off to him, and my thanks to him as well as the other volunteers. Yeah, they they do uh, well. Waycross is uh, is your community in action, folks. And if you if you're interested in uh, in, in, in being involved, oh, Ogletree Eric, just Eric Ogletree <laughs> took out the lead block. That's anyway. Scott Kreider he leveled. <laughs> but uh, you know, Waycross is uh, is your community your community in action. This is uh, this is volunteerism bringing you everything imaginable under the video under the video sun. I guess <laughs> uh, there there's uh, sports, there's uh, there's uh, church movements, there's uh, community involvement there's governmental programming uh, community television is the last bastion of community i think it, it's what ties people together and it's something to really be proud of and, and to become part of if you if you're interested uh, give way cross a call and i, I think play. that was a broken Plus play, play. <laughs> i think they were trying that option again and uh, had no one in the backfield to have an option with Let's watch this again. It looks like Finneytown almost jumps offside, holds up at the line, and then freezes before the snap. There's the jump. 
Let's see if they, if they get back. The smart thing would have been Lewis just to snap the ball. Ogletree, Ogletree right now. He was leaning. I think, he, I, think uh, I don't know. We can't see. We aren't looking down the line. But uh, it was close. Yeah. But uh, the the uh, Finnegan's defensive line is lined up a yard off the ball. They mm -hmm. are not on the line of scrimmage. They're back. And they, that, that did him in good stead a couple times before. Here's Brings up the fourth out. down. They tried to get him to jump offside unsuccessfully again. That's the second time they've tried that tonight. And both times it's been unsuccessful. Of course, the last time they did this, they came right back <laughs> right. And, and gave it to uh, uh, P.J. Pope, who went 49 yards. Yeah. So uh, maybe this is the way they set that up. Well, on a, on a fourth and six with two and a half minutes to go, you're up by two touchdowns. Uh, your defense has had success from stopping the Wildcat running attack in the fourth quarter. Uh, I think he's probably going to opt to pin them. Again, if uh, there are Finneytown fans out there uh, that are paying attention to this at this late stage of the day, of the evening, uh, uh, we want to remind you that the Boosters uh, scramble is coming up, and uh, you need to contact Rick Meter at 541-7162. Uh, and if you know of someone that you think would be a really good nominee for the Finneytown Hall of Fame, you need to get those nominations in before the end of October. Uh, do so by calling Joe Speaks at Finneytown High School, 931-0712. You can get a nomination ballot. Check the uh, Hilltop News also. But here comes a punt for the Cowboys. Uh, they punt it away. It's uh, Mike Harris back receiving the punt. And uh, again, yeah, there's just no nowhere here. to go. Smiley hung that one for at least four and a half seconds. Yep. That was a fantastic punt. That was a good punt. And if you are watching at this late and late, late and great date, <laughs> get that one out. Uh, we have some other times for you in case you uh, are watching this. 11:30. On the Thursday night, we are going to rerun this game on September the 11th at 6.30 p.m. on Channel 17. Sunday, September 12th at 2.30 p.m. Tuesday, September 14th at 8 p.m. And Thursday, September 16th at 9.30 p.m. All on Channel 17, the Educational Access Channel of Wake Cross Community Media. Finneytown calls timeout with uh, 225 remaining. I think that leaves them with one, doesn't it? I believe. You know, uh, Andy, just to uh, kind of pat the volunteers of Waycross on the back, the, uh, this uh, last uh, summer, Waycross won the national recognition for its sports coverage on the St. Xavier uh, playoff series. That, uh, that, uh, the Waycross volunteers followed all the way to the state finals, but uh, then we got down <laughs> to the state finals and we didn't get the chance to do that one. But uh, this is a, an award-winning uh, operation at Waycross and again it, it only works when you work if uh, if you want to become involved in bringing your community closer together give Waycross a call what's that number Andy 825-2429 Gardner Gardner Hurt. out there he's got it take off buddy and I don't know if can he catch him he can he be get him. No, that's he's it gone. He's gone. Oh, what a great What play. do we say? They can strike just sure, like that. That's right. No, Ryan Shelton wasn't going to catch him. Well, he gave it a good effort. But I'll tell you what, Jace, Jason Gardner, two herds. That's the same play that you called before over here. Exactly. The other side of the field. They, that time they ran it more towards the center of the field. Gardner drops back, fakes the handoff to Ogletree. Well, we got to get the extra point up here now. Now the extra point does become crucial. Just a nice over-the-shoulder catch by Hurd. Turns on the afterburner. In for six. What do you think the yardage was on that, Andy? I, you know, I I'm gonna I'm gonna guess. I, it was, I think it was 76 yards. I would say I was gonna say 74 yards. Throw it! Oh, uh, just not able to get free. Well. That's the second snap that yep. uh, there's a there's a flaw in the in the ointment on that mm. and it needs that needs to be worked on. I suspect this week there's going to be a good <laughs> deal of work spent on uh, I imagine on a long so. snap. Nick file trying his best. Yeah. 
Now that's a, that's a heck of a play. That uh, there we go. That's what he, that's what a coach needs to do. Keep his players' heads in the game. Yep. Let them know, hey, we are in this. What do you think? Off, onside kick? Go try it now. <laughs> no, oh. no. I think they'll kick it deep. Let, get, let Wyoming have the ball for four downs so that it makes it interesting to run it, <laughs> run it bring it right down. They can't. They can't. Yes, they can. Uh, <laughs> we can get the ball back with 30 with 13 seconds left. That'd make it very yeah, interesting. Well, it only took a, it only took about eight seconds for that uh, for that score to happen. Now we got you where we want you. Lull them into a <laughs> sense of boredom. Ah, well, look who's kicking off now for the Wildcats. Okay, what I see here is Jason Gardner. Yeah, Jason Gardner's kicking off. I'm surprised they're not going to use Harworth on this one. A soccer style kicker has a better opportunity I, at, at thumping a ball. But you know, Jason Gardner kicks soccer style too. I yeah, he does. And, and it may very well be that he's got a very nice touch on the ball. I've got a story that I could tell about a kid that played for me about a hundred <laughs> years ago who could, he, he came from Germany and uh, he could do anything with a football. And we had an onside kick. Oh, this is interesting. We're going to run everybody over here. Okay, the load this side. The object to it get it on top. Yards. No. And it didn't go 10 yards. But it's recovered right there in this Wyoming's ball. The ball didn't jump for it. Just him. didn't get the jump. He didn't get on top of the ball nope. enough. He followed. The ball's got to jump. It's got to be in the air, and you got to be. You got to have the red under. Yeah. Now there, there's the. You can see now this ball comes just. Yeah, see, he did. He, 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 he leaned yeah. back on it. Lean back. He leaned back on it. Yeah. Yep. You get a kick on top of it and make it hop. Well, that's okay. They, okay. They, they, they gave it as much as he could go. Now this gives a nice little interesting twist to this. This Wyoming come out, knowing that Finneytown has one timeout, 2:13 to go. Are they going to take the chance? Are they going to try and score again? Well, I think Wyoming's going to run the ball clock? hard. I don't think they're going to sit on it. Must to play again. Oh, Man, but my goodness, one. Kyle Lewis. Hit him. He's got to get the Whip ball. Whip the ball. Lewis, is a, that that was just an outstanding. That was an outstanding effort. personal effort. That was an outstanding Super personal play effort by, on him. by Kyle Lewis. Just, just tremendous. Took a busted play. Yep. And the I'll whole thing what, was screwed up, and Lewis Lewis made a brought roses out of the dung heap. That's a that's a that's a, a great great personal effort play. You that maybe is the play of the game. I, I'd have to say, for momentum's sake, yes, indeed. I, up until then, I was going to say the nice long pass over here from uh, Gardner to Hurd. I thought maybe that was the play of the game, but no, I think that, from a personal standpoint, was it. That or Pope's 49-yarder. Those are both impressive I'd, I'd plays for, to me. For the stage of the game, I'd have to say, again, that their handoffs are not very clean. This could give them problems. I think Kyle Lewis may be hurt. He is he is favoring his right shoulder. It looks like we're gonna get a measurement. No timeout. This may be Finney, Finney Town's timeout. I want to see this. The handoff again was not very clean. And I don't know if it's because of Lewis favoring something or if it's. Just doesn't have that confident snapback with his with, with his handoff. That could that could create a problem. It did earlier in the first half. Well, it's second and eight. The ball's uh, on about the 16-yard line. It looks like uh, maybe yeah, about the uh, it's a 15-yard line. Wyoming leads 21-13 minute 55 left in the game something spectacular has to be done here someone's gonna have to step up and either this make a play the, I, I, regardless of the outcome of the game Finneytown has every right to be very very pleased with the with this game they've played one of the best teams in the state of Ohio very evenly and uh, I, I, I don't think they can be uh, upset about what they've done at all uh, they, they played well definitely definitely uh, when you take a look at the program from last year uh, suffered from injuries and some grades uh, all of a sudden you, you come into a season with not knowing what to expect in a first-year coach uh, 
but I guarantee you, you take a look at some of these Wildcat eyes, and uh, there's a fire there. Look at them. Yeah, they're still they're hanging together. They aren't strung out along the sideline. Uh, they don't have their heads down. They're still together, and they're, they're still looking for one last gasp. I'll tell you what I like to see, Dave, is the fact that you've got both. Ooh. Oh, nice. Take a look at both sides of where the players Pope are. tough. Yeah. Yep. Both sidelines. You know, you know. Uh, Saturday there's going to be a heck of a contest too between the two reserve squads. <laughs> <laughs> Those guys are going to go at it. I got, they will go at it. Definitely. <laughs> That's what people don't remember is that there's, uh, you know, they only see the Friday night game. Oh boy, wait till wait till wait Saturday, Saturday morning. Oh boy. Fourth and six. Wyoming electing to go for the first down with 13 seconds. That may do it. Yeah, they're, they're going to run it out. They can run it out and just not do anything. That's going to be the leg. Actually, he's going to have to run backwards. Yeah. He's going to have to run the clock out. Yeah. Because if, the, if he slips, takes a knee or anything, that gives the Wildcats one last play. Yeah, he could, he could do that, too. Well, actually, he could kneel. If he kneels, play automatic, time automatically stops for the possession change. Oh, that no, gives them one last play. This is interesting. I want to see it with Lewis's athleticism. Let's see if he elects to run this one out and keep it on the clock. But again. Oh, they're moving the clock. Back clock's going back up seconds. to 10 seconds. This. That's interesting. Now this uh, does that's, make it interesting because I don't think Lewis can run for 10 seconds very, very long. No, that's very interesting because I, we were watching the clock. I was watching the clock on the monitor, and, and when they reached the, uh, the point where they called the delay, it was well under that 10 seconds. Now maybe the officials, they're still working this one out. Essentially screwed up and didn't call it right. Six is oh, on the six. six now. Six now. Okay. We've been corrected. Okay, let's see what he does. Head for the other end zone. Oh, he's going to roll right. He's going for the end zone. He's going to the other end zone. Kyle. That's game. Boy, he sure did. He gave it a he gave it a lick, didn't he? He did. I'll tell you what. That's what he I wanted. Said. He wanted in that end zone. You know, I, he wanted in that end zone. That was an outstanding football game. That was a great ball game. Uh, and uh, hats let's, go off to. Let's watch uh, this. Let's watch this athleticism out of Lewis this, on this, this play. This is a fine run right here. I mean, this is. He could have taken an easy way out. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he chose not to. He was going for gold. I mean, he was going for gold. What an outstanding finish to an outstanding game. Well, it was it was certainly worthwhile uh, on the field right now. The uh, teams are are congratulating one another. There's uh, uh, this is uh, these guys play hard. They they respect one another. I think that's probably one of the best ball games I've seen in this series over the years. That's been one of the really top games. And uh, that's the way high school sports is all about. Uh, it's uh, it's about kids getting out there, and they're going to get more benefits than just the WNL. They're not making great salaries or anything else. If you have a chance to go out and support your local high school athletics, please do so. It's the best bargain in America. Mr. Bean, it's been a pleasure. I this, appreciate this it. This is Dave hey, Bean for hey, hey, Andy hey, hey. Anderson and uh, all of the Waycross there staff. There's Cam, uh, There's Tony Suarez in the truck. There, there's one of Alex Hoffel. How you doing? Hey. Great job on audio. Matt Weber, camera operator. Hugh Staples down on the graphics and replay. Uh, That's you, Mr. Miss Bean. Miss announcer. Production assistant, Misty Dannenhauer. She's our new lady. She's our new girl. Welcome right. aboard, Misty. Great job. Brian Dye, production assistant. He was supposed to get our audio fixed and did. And there's video club coordinator and announcer, Andy Anderson. Chip Berkwist is our executive producer. This is Waycross Community Sports. Wishing you safe travels and uh, back your local high schools. This has been a production of the Waycross Community Media, the access partnership of Forest Park, Green Hills, and Springfield Township. 
Opinions expressed are those of the program's participants and do not necessarily represent the Community Programming Board, volunteers and staff of the Waycross Media Center, the community governments, or the cable company. If you have questions regarding this program or if you would like to participate in the activities of Waycross Community Media, call 825-2429 or write Waycross Community Media, 2086 Waycross Road, Forest Park, Ohio, 45240.